It's time for a long overdue garden update. Welcome back. This is Eric from the African Homestead. I'm not going to offer any excuses. Uh, just, I'm sorry, it's been a long time since I've given a garden update. So I just wanted to uh, right the wrongs today and just update you on everything that's been going. All my successes and all my failures. This bed represents uh, some sadness and some happiness, some loss and some new hope. This is where I was growing the zucchini. It was doing fantastic. I mean, seriously, the, it was putting on some fruit as big as my thumb and then powdery mildew. Wham! Hit it. Within a week or two, it was completely collapsed. But my new hope is I have some friends that live up country. I, the, the people I mentioned in the video uh, at Liberia International Christian College, the director of the ARC, he brought some sweet potatoes from Aldi and has grown them successfully. And so he was nice enough to give me a couple of sweet potatoes. And so I'm growing the slips here. And last week we just planted a bunch of those. So in the next 60 to 90 days, we are gonna have some wonderful orange American sweet potatoes that are impossible to find here. You just don't find them in the store. So I'm super, super excited. And the fact that someone else has grown them without any problems is giving me a lot of hope. This is the squash, the uh, Liberian pumpkin. I actually thought I was going to lose it. Uh, it, after the powdery mildew took out my zucchini, it moved over and was attacking the squash and almost died back. But as you can see, it has had a second, a second life. And so it has spread halfway across the garden. Still no fruit on, uh, but I do have hope. There are some blossoms and so we're just, uh, time will tell. Where the pumpkin is spreading is where my uh, cantaloupe used to be. Now, you may see this and not see cantaloupe and say, well, that was a failure. It actually wasn't because it produced, I harvested, and I'll, I'll insert some photos. I didn't take any video of it, but I'll insert a couple of photos. The cantaloupe were wonderful. And this is another fruit that you cannot find in Liberia, uh, except there's one store that have them, but I think they must pick them when they're half grown because they just, they're small. You can't, you put them to your face, you can't smell them. But these cantaloupe were wonderful. And so uh, we actually planted some more that we're gonna be growing our second crop. As other crops have failed, the Liberian uh, chili pepper have really taken off and we've continued to plant those. And so uh, you can see we have some new chili peppers here. And in between them, uh, we have our second planting of cantaloupe. And so I have high hopes for that, but these peppers are just doing fantastic. As you can see, they are just on the plant and you can pick these green, you can pick them orange, you can pick them red. No matter how you pick them, they are hot. The Moringa are, well, they're here. They're not, they're not dying, but in the dry season, it is normal for the Moringa to really slow down. Uh, these actually are, have blossoms on them, and so they're gonna start producing some seeds, um, but uh, not really putting out too much growth right now. Here's another new crop I'm excited about. After some encouragement and great advice from the gentleman over at the More You Grow channel, I decided to go to the store and get some ginger. And so I have my ginger coming up now. Now if I can just keep my puppy from coming in here every couple of days and trying to dig it up, I think it would do a lot better. But you can see what's undisturbed is doing great, but what's been disturbed is not doing so well. So if I can just keep our puppy out of there, I'm really excited about the ginger crop that's coming up now. As I've talked about in previous videos, we planted four different varieties of tomatoes. Two cherry tomato varieties and two kind of a mid-sized tomato variety. This is one called Neptune. And as you can see, it's not real big, but it is a healthy sized tomato. You cannot grow like beefsteak tomatoes in Liberia. It's just too hot and the, uh, the, the, it, they'll bloom, but they just won't set any fruit. And so the other one I tried was Tropic VFN. Uh, had high hopes for it, a lot of disease resistant, designed for the tropics, and they just, they failed. I'm gonna try them again, but uh, the Neptune, at least we're getting some production. Now over here, the cherry tomatoes, I tried Matt's Wild Cherry, 
and I tried Old Fashioned Cherry. Both of those did well. The Old Fashioned Cherry is a little bit larger fruit, but you can see we have had what's most likely nematodes attack them, and so they are just slowly dying, but they're not going out without a fight, and you can see we got some great fruit on here, um, and it's been just wonderful having sweet red cherry tomatoes. Now one of my biggest disappointments is behind me, or it isn't behind me, that is I lost the entire crop of cucumbers. I had the Arkansas Little Leaf pickling cucumbers and I had the Ashley slicing cucumbers. Uh, we came in and I'll put it on the screen, I can't remember the name of what attacked it, but they were just destroyed. Um, we tried some organic solutions to it and it was just uh, too little too late and we lost the entire crop and so I was so looking forward I have some dill over here I was so looking forward to making some cucumbers I mean uh, to some beautiful homemade dill pickles but what I'm gonna have to do is just buy some of the local slicing cucumbers buy them small and uh, and make it make it with those I'll survive it's gonna be okay this is our third planting of corn uh, the first planting didn't really get much out of it um, but we we did learn from that and then over here on our second planting we did a lot better it still wasn't fantastic you know this is a, a North American I, I used the I, can, I think it's called bodacious super sweet was the variety I used it's supposed to grow seven feet tall it grew about four um, and we were able to get probably nine or ten ears off of this bed but honestly it was beautiful it's probably the second best corn I've ever grown and the first the first best was actually grown when we lived in Iowa I mean that's corn country um, and so we have our third planting here learning our lessons making improvements every time we plant we do so I have high expectations we'll probably go ahead and put a fourth planting back in this bed um, we have some volunteer eggplant here that is uh, is doing just fine I don't love eggplant so I'll somebody will eat it but not me this is our bed of sweet potato greens uh, a few weeks ago it really started slowing down to where we weren't you know we were just cutting once a week to feed our goats and rabbits and our chickens and the last couple of weeks it didn't keep up and I couldn't figure out so we were putting I was putting tons of water on it I came in with chicken manure I'm sorry with uh, rabbit manure and goat manure and made manure tea and it just it wasn't picking up I couldn't figure out what it was and then of course the locals reminded me well it's done it's done it's not gonna pick up it's it's ran its life and so we started digging we found out sure enough it produced its tubers uh, but because we were cutting this all along it didn't produce very large ones but it produced the tubers and it's a they call it sweet potato and yes when you eat it it has a sweet flavor not like the orange variety we're used to in the US but uh, I'll, I'll insert a photo of what they look like. They're, they're small probably because we never let the, the greens uh, on top grow, but decided, well, let's go ahead and replant. So I spent uh, about 500 Liberian dollars on slips for these sweet potatoes. Hey, Tio, how are you? Hey, Dad. What do you have in your shirt, buddy? Transformer. Transformer, okay. Yeah. And so uh, about 500 Liberian dollars, which with the exchange rate is say four and a half US dollars and got all of these slips. We planted them on Monday of this week. It's now Saturday at the time of filming and they are starting to pick up and you can see there are different varieties. Nobody knows what, you know, what the exact variety. Some have a heart shaped leaf. Some have a star shaped leaf. Um, there's another type like this sometimes they're a little purple so there's like probably three or four different varieties of sweet potatoes in here but they're just starting to pick up and by this time next week we're going to be able to start harvesting the greens as always our avocados are doing just great they're taking off i really need to get them out of these buckets and into the ground got a couple more over there um the mer I've been doing a lot of studying about permaculture design and food forests. And so I really want to get these up country and get them in the ground. But at the same time, I want to make sure that they are, they are part of the, the design of the food forest. And so um, that's delaying me a little bit, but I'm going to end up having to take action. I hate for these things to um, end up getting stunted because they're stuck in these buckets. 
but uh, that's part of the plan. They're going to be part of a food forest and that I'm that I'm putting in a permaculture design for the land. My pineapples are still here. They're just kind of languishing. Uh, the soil is super poor here and it's dry and we're probably a year away from them starting to produce. This is the only one that looks like it's large enough to stand a chance of producing within the next 12 months, but I'm going to be relocating these up country. And as you can see, I don't know why I don't cut these down. These, these are our papayas. They all have this same disease that the, the, the leaves are not looking like they should. They're producing a little bit. Um, over here, this is one of the dwarf varieties I have. It still only stands less than three feet tall and it has some fruit on it. It tastes okay, but uh, not great. The disease they have will affect the taste. And so um, I'm probably just going to need to cut these down pretty soon because they're just not, not doing much other than growing. And here we have the passion fruit and it's continuing to grow, continuing to spread, not too aggressively. Again, that's probably due in a large part to being in the dry season. I'm just giving it some compost tea or manure tea periodically, but uh, soon it will take off and cover this whole arbor and provide some nice shade and hopefully some fruit before we need to move. So seasons are changing in Liberia. We are in the middle of the dry season, actually about two months, a little over two months away from the beginning of the rainy season. And so we have some new fruit coming on, coming into season. This is one they call Criso. And I don't know if you recognize this, and actually the tree is up here behind me. And if you recognize this little seed on the end, it is actually a cashew. And cashew, uh, in Liberia, people just eat the fruit. They, they call it the apple. Um, but the valuable part is this nut. Nobody uses it in Liberia. Now, next door in the Ivory Coast, they know the value of it. I think they're the, the third largest producer of cashews in the world. And so they're taking advantage of it. Liberia, on the other hand, aren't. Uh, this is super high in vitamin C. And as you can see, here, I'll take a bite of it. I, I don't love the taste of it, but similar to an apple, when you eat it, it almost makes it almost like a dry mouth feeling, but it is super, Look at that. It's just full of liquid. And so my son loves them. Anytime he can get them off the tree, he, he loves to eat them and they're full of vitamin C. So I let him love to eat them. Uh, but for me, it's not, not my forte. But this is the season and for the next few months, they're gonna be dropping. I have three of these trees in our yard. Now, another thing that we love that's also coming into season is avocado. And so you can see I don't know, I don't want to get the sun in the background. But we have some avocados on this tree. Uh, we have two avocado trees in the, in the yard. One is under the shade of a mango tree, so it doesn't produce too much. But this one will get uh, probably, I don't know, maybe a couple dozen avocados off of it. Um, and we're super excited about that. We love eating avocados. Another fruit that's coming into season is the mango and so in our yard we have about five mango trees this is the biggest one i don't know how how tall it is uh, but it's starting to set some fruit let me zoom in okay you can see one there and that one is probably a little bit smaller than the size of my fist this is what the locals call a german a german plum and they get very large about twice uh, about the size of two fists and then they have another one called the country plum that's smaller that's about half the size. Uh, both are good, but uh, this one, because of the height of the tree, usually the birds get to it and they're either half eaten or half rotten before they drop. Uh, where some of the shorter ones, you'll be able to knock them down with a stick. Well, that's my garden update. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions about what it's like to garden in the tropics, feel free to just ask the questions below. Uh, if you have any suggestions on different things I can try, and it's got to be able to handle the tropical heat and the sun and the rain, but I'd love to hear your suggestions on some different things I can try to grow my garden. Comment section below. Uh, feel free, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet and you want to follow along, click that subscribe button. If you ring the bell, ding the bell, dong the bell, whatever it's called, uh, you'll get a notification, probably get a notification every time I post a new video, which is about once or twice a week. And then if you like what I'm 
what I'm doing and you want to uh, help get the word out, feel free to share the video on all your social media platforms. Thanks a lot. Have a great week. Bye-bye.